Good evening, everyone. Can you please say to the person beside you, God is good. Praise God. So, good evening, everyone. This is our first uh, night. Uh, this is our day one for our prayer and fasting. And uh, it's really encouraging to see everyone here, you know, to, to pray and fast um, corporately as a body of Christ. And it just encourages me to, you know, to speak to you also on this time of prayer and fasting. And to, today we are focused in our prayer and fasting prayer for our family. And to start off, to start off, by the way, I'm Brother Stephen. I'm one of the uh, uh, volunteers here in CCF Eastwood. So as we start, I know you have uh, children, your kids, and probably nephew for those who are single. And, you know, we have kids that like to imitate or copy uh, superheroes, right? Try to put costumes and sometimes they act the superheroes they have also. And I don't know if you know this guy. Uh, this is James Dean, right? So, for, so, so mga hindi pa na, uh, decades before, people tried to imitate yung hair dunya, no? The way he dresses, the jacket, the, the white t-shirt, uh, hindi ko po siya ini-imitate, pero <laughs> yan, medyo ano na ba? Uh, but anyway, um, people like to imitate this, uh, this, this man. And probably now, the youngsters, I don't even know each and every one of them, but the K-pop bands, you know, people try to imitate their dance, their, their songs, and probably their hairstyles. And um, this is all fun and entertaining, right? But we have to ask ourselves, have we been imitating Jesus Christ? And for our title, this, uh, for our Devo for tonight, it's titled, Imitate God, Walk in Love. So before we start, uh, let's, let's, uh, may I ask everyone to... To uh, join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, O oh Lord, thank you Lord for this wonderful evening that you have given us. Thank you Lord for this time that we could gather, pray, um, and learn more about you. Lord, may you just override my preparation. Lord, may you open uh, our hearts and our mind to receive your word. And Lord, I know, Lord, that the passage that we will go through this evening, it's easy to read, but it's really very, very, very hard to do. And we just pray, Lord, that as you speak to us, may, may we just put into practice what we will learn this evening. We lift up to you, Lord, um, our time together. In this, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> so our passage for this evening is in Ephesians 5, chapter, uh, ch chapter 5, verses 1 to 2. And if I may ask, let's read everyone. Verse 1, Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. Before we dive in to this passage, as you know, Paul was uh, talking to the people in Ephesus, and you see the first word, as we all know, when you see therefore, it means Paul is going to make a statement from a previous uh, wordings that he said, which is in uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. It says, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ has forgiven you. Just to summarize basically this verse, in these previous verses, um, Paul was saying to the Ephesus that, you know, now that you are, you have a life, a new life being a believer, because of you were once 
bitter. Again, in Ephesus at that time, there's, 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 it's really a worldly, they are into worldly sins. So people are bitter. Peter are, uh, they have a problem in anger. They have a problem in uh, gossiping, slander, and all kinds of malice. That's why in the last verse, uh, in the last part of the verse also, it says, as um, forgiving each other. So knowing that us, we were forgiven by God, we ought to forgive other people also. In other words, to summarize this is, coming from the old self and now putting the new person that has been created by Christ, we go back to the verse 1, which is, therefore, we are to imitate God. And just to define the, the meaning of imitate, it is to behave in a similar way to someone or something else, or to copy the speech. So we are to copy, gagaya, ginagaya natin. And you know what? We have, we have imitated someone, someone or one or another, probably a singer, <clears throat> um, celebrity, probably some, some people in good in sports. But here, we go back in verse 1, we are to imitate God. I mean, this is God the Almighty. Let us make that sink in for a while. And this is where we see that it is easy to read. And daling basahin. But it's very, very hard to do. We all know that uh, in this world that we live in, the longer we live in this world, the more that we are going to imitate the world, right? But the more, but being a believer, as we go and pray more, dive into the word, read your word, as you go to spending your time in your quiet time, the more it will be easier, us, easier for us to imitate God. But here we are not just to imitate God, but we are to walk in Love, just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up. So the instructions for us also is to love and walk in love. And how are we to love? And that's the example. As Christ himself gave up for us. Christ are also loved and gave himself up for us. The Lord Jesus Christ is our supreme example in his self-sacrificing for the lost sinners. He took the human sin upon himself and gave up his very life that man might be redeemed from sin. So that we will be able, we will have the new nature of the holy nature in us and will be able to inherit eternal life. Paul is telling the people in, the Ephes in Ephesus that they, are, they need to be imitators of his great love with the power of the Holy Spirit. It demonstrated in the most complete and perfect way. Si Jesus mismo ang nagpakita ng sa atin. And here he gave himself up. Jesus loved us sacrificially. That is how we are to imitate God as we love other people. So sacrifice is the act of giving up something of value for the sake of something or someone else. This is not a sacrifice. It's not like if you have, let's say, meron kang 1,000 uh, sacks of rice and then someone is asking for a kilo of rice, then you will say, okay, that's, that's for you. You can have it. Do you think that's a sacrifice? No. Here, an example of sacrifice is what Jesus did to us. And he commands us also that we do that to other people. 
This is how we are to show love to other people. Jesus is not just asking us to love other people, those who are unlovable, but he is asking us to, to sacrifice, to give what is in value to us. And to understand the weight of this is we go to Romans 5 verses 8 to 10. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. Then, for if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Jesus Christ demonstrated here his love, how he demonstrated it. He basically died for us. He died by his blood through the death of his son. That's, that's the weight of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ for us, of that love towards us. And let's take that moment right now and just remember the, our past when we were in the darkness and we didn't mind of the sin we were committing. That despite that time of rebellion, Jesus, because of his love and character, he died on that cross for us. Now that we understand the kind of love that Jesus gave to us, how he demonstrated it, we now are to imitate that kind of love. Therefore, we go to verse 15 to 21. Therefore, now that we are, you know, again, we go back, we are now a new being. We are Christians. We are believers. Therefore, we are, be careful on how you walk, not the unwise, but wise. Making the most of your time. So how are we using our time now? Is it towards the purpose of God? Is it the will of God? Is it the plan of God? Or are we taking our own plan in our life? Now that we are focusing on the family, are you taking your time doing your devotion with the family, with your children, with your parents, with your spouse? Verse 17, so then do not be foolish, but understand that the will of the Lord is. How are we to understand the will of the Lord? We go back to spending time reading his word, looking for the truth, having praying, communing, like what Pastor Peter said yesterday. We are to commune. We are to pray to God. Verse 18, do not get drunk with wine, for that is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. This is a very key verse for us. Again, we cannot love. It's going to be hard. It's not even hard. Hindi siya mahirap, pero impossible na mahalin ang isang unlovable. Tama? That's why we need the Holy Spirit for us to empower us, to enable us to love other people. Number 19, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing in me and making melody with your heart to the Lord. The words that come out from our mouth, is it pleasing to the Lord or is it gossiping, lies, or even putting other people down? Again, here we are to command, we are commanded to speak or sing praises, sing uh, exalting him who God is and we are to do that to our family as well right share your testimony of how Christ sal uh, your salvation in Christ in you pwede natin sabihin to sa ating mga uh, kamag-anak mahal sa buhay people that doesn't know yet Christ and verse 20 always giving thanks for all things are we this kind of person that we just give thanks to the Lord dun sa mga magagandang nangyayari lang sa atin? Or 
are we also giving thanks to those trials, challenges that we encounter? Again, it says here, we are to give thanks in all things, in all things, sa lahat. And lastly, we are to subject one another in the fear of Christ. We are to be accountable. We are to be, um, we are to be humble. That's why I encourage everyone to, you know, to join in a small group, in a D group. Why? That's where we could really uh, encourage one another. And if you need correctness, uh, if you need to be corrected, you come there and you be uh, accountable to another person and you be humble also. As we, as we close, I would like to share a story to you. This is um, Cory Ten Boom. And let me read the story. Cory Ten Boom was a Dutch watchmaker who along with her family harbored hundreds of Jews amid the war. In the World War II. It's believed that their efforts in their family have saved nearly 800 lives. When she was caught, she was sent to concentration camp where she had stripped of her dignity, saw her father and her sister, Betsy, die, and suffered more and at the hands of other people than we could possibly imagine. After the World War II, Corrie herself was put in a test in 1947 while she was speaking in a church in Munich. At, at the close of that service, a balding man in a gray overcoat stepped forward to greet her. Corrie froze. She knew this man well. He'd been one of the most vicious guards in Ravensbrück, one of, one of the one who had mocked the women prisoners as they showered. It came back to the, with a rush as she wrote, the huge room with its harsh overhead right, lights, the pathetic pile of dresses and shoes in the center of the floor, the shame of walking naked past this man. And now he was pushing his hand out to shake hers and saying, a fine message, Fraulein, how good it is to know that as you say, all sins are at the bottom of the sea. And I, who has spoken so persuasively of forgiveness, fumbled in my pocket rather than to take that hand. He would not remember me, of course. How could he remember one prisoner among those thousands of women? But I remembered him and the leather crop swinging from his belt. I was face to face with the one of my captors and my blood seemed to freeze. You mentioned Reverend Brock in your talk, he was saying. I was a guard there, but since that time, I have become a Christian. I know that God has forgiven me for the cruel things I did there, but I would like to hear it from you, from you and from your lips as well, Fraulein. Again, the hand came out, will you forgive me? And I stood there, I whose sins had again and again to be forgiven and could not forgive. Betsy had died in that place. Could he erase her slow, terrible death simply by asking? The soldier stood there expectantly, waiting for Cory to shake his hand. She wrestled with the most difficult thing I had ever had to do, for I had to do it. I knew, I knew that the message that God forgives has a prior condition, that we forgive those who have injured us. Standing there before the former SS man, Corey remembered that forgiveness is an act of the will, not of an emotion. Jesus, help me, she prayed. I can lift my hand. I can do that much. You supply the feeling. Corey trusts her hand.
And as I did, an incredible thing took place. The current started in my shoulder, raised down my arm, sprung into my joined hands, and then this healing warmth seemed to be to flood my whole being, being tears to my eyes. I forgive you, brother, I cried with all my heart. For a long moment, we grasped each other's hand, the former guard and the former prisoner. I had never known God's love so intensely as I did then. But even so, I realized it was not my love. I had tried and did not have the power. It was the power of the Holy Spirit. Corey showed a sacrificial love, understanding God's love towards her. And as we end, again, we are to imitate God and walk in love. We are to remember how God demonstrated his love towards us. We are to love even though we don't feel it. We are to sacrifice or give something that we value to other people. Again, we walk in love to forgive like God has forgiven us. To walk in love is to be intentional with how we live and maximize the time we, are, we have left in this life. To imitate God and walk in love, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. To imitate God and walk in love, we consistently need to be in God's word. Live with a heart of worship, have an attitude of gratitude, and humble ourselves. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you, Lord, for this evening. Thank you, Lord, for your word that we are to imitate you, Lord, and we are to walk in love and, not rem and remember how you have demonstrated this love towards us. Lord, as we pray also, Lord, for our families, may this love really put into our hearts, oh Lord. Help us to, to see you more rather than ourselves. Again, Lord, this we pray, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you for leading us uh, on the first day of Night Watch. Uh, you know, as I was listening to Stephen and as meditating on scriptures, um, and today the prayer focus really family. No, I was really reminded that that through to Stephen's devotion, that um, the ability to love, the, the ability to imitate God, and to walk in love is is something that uh, is something that's very that that it's something that needs to be very consistent in our walk. What, what am I trying to say? As I was listening to Stephen, and I was meditating in Ephesians chapter five, verse one and two. I realized that if if my desire is really to imitate God, I cannot help but walk in love. And and the way and how Stephen explained it, the way we need to walk in love, the way to imitate God and the way to walk in love is to really understand how God loves us. And uh, I think that is really for me the, the, the direct correlation that if I am truly to really love people, I cannot do that if I would not really understand how God loves me. That's why he shared that in, in Romans chapter 5 that even when we were enemies, he just loved us and God loved us. And no best way to really apply this, this command of God to love than to love our families. Oftentimes, since they are the closest to us, since they are the most that we spend time with, oftentimes they are the ones that are not really the recipient. Sila hindi sila nakakatanggap ng pumamahal na yan. You know, sometimes um, it's uh, sometimes it's rebuking for Christians that we so love our church, we so love our D group, we so love one another, but we really do not show that to our family. And so it's really nice that today Stephen took us into that part where really, if we truly want to exercise love, family should be the one that should receive that. Amen. So tonight, we're going to go and pray for that as we really focus on the family. And uh, in any of our prayer and night watch, we are really now going to spend a time, about 25 minutes in prayer. 
And so for some of you, this perhaps could be your first uh, prayer and fasting. So what do we do? So what we do is we come here every night. And then we sing one or two songs to prepare our hearts. And then we have a devotional share. Tonight it's Stephen. Tomorrow it's Joe Wu. And then the rest of the night there are more speakers that will come. And then what happens is that after they share devotion, we will now come in a time of prayer. So we're going to pray lahat, you know. And we're going to pray for about 22, 23 minutes, 25 minutes. And then people will say, Ha, ano pagdasal natin in 25 minutes? Eh, two minutes lang nga, hindi ako mapagdasal eh. Right? O paano pa pag 25 minutes? Well, we would like to share with you that there's actually a pattern that we suggest that you follow when we come to a time of praying. And how do we do that? It's simple. Uh, madali pong ma-remember. The prayer guide is CAST, C-A-S-T. So ito po yung guide. So ang desire po natin is to improve our prayer life. And the way to improve our prayer life is para po maintindihan natin yung flow. And one of the model in coming up with prayer is CAST. So ano uno po nang gagawin? Confess. So ano uno pong gagawin is that when we come to a time of prayer now, you will now ask the Lord to forgive all your sins. We come to a time of repentance when we confess. Okay? And then can I have the slide on confess, please? Yes, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal anything in your life that is not pleasing to Him. Lord, search my heart. And then humbly confess all known sin to Him. And then once we have done that, we ask for, give, for the forgive. sorry. We ask for forgiveness even for sins that you may not be aware you have committed. Alam nyo ba yan? You could ask for that. Ako, I come to the Lord every morning telling Him, Lord, please forgive me for the sins that I have done that I might not be aware of. Kasi minsan po, meron tayong mga ganong kasalanan. And that's, it's okay to come to the Lord and ask for forgiveness for that. So first, C, confession. Second is adoration. Once we realize that God is faithful to forgive us, you will thank Him. Once you realize that when you ask for forgiveness, God is already forgiving that and paid for that through the sacrifice that He has done on the cross, you now adore Him and say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for dying in the cross. Thank you for the forgiveness of my sin and spend time in personal worship extolling Him. Okay? Uh... Sorry, nawala. Doon tayo ulit sa... Yes, thank you. Hindi ko, di ko to memoriado. Eh. Pasensya na. Praise Him for His character and attributes. Thank the Lord for who He is. Tignan nyo, isipin nyo ano yung mga ginawa niya sa buhay nyo and how He's faithful. That's how you adore Him. And that's how you really provide for Him. Call out, sino ba siya? He's the Savior. He's the provider. He's the healer. He's the shepherd and many, many others. So second point po is adoration. The third point po, which is S, is supplication. That's now when you are now ready to come to the Lord, your petitions to the Lord in today's prayer. And today's prayer focus is family. God's love for the family. So I pray that you will really pray to the Lord about your respective family. And so C, A, S, supplication. And T is thanksgiving. Yun po yung last. That you should thank the Lord. By the way, we, re we remember, we, 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 we had this yesterday that we should... Pwede po tayo magpasalamat sa Panginoon kahit di pa po natin nakukuha yung sagot sa ating mga dasal. No, thank Him in advance by, for His faith, for His answer to your provisions. Okay, so ulitin po natin. Ano ulit yung C-A-S-T? Number one, C? Okay, number, and then letter A, adoration about the Lord. And then S, supplication. And then C is thanksgiving. Ngayon pong gabing to, what we will do is we'll, now we will give you time. You could actually pray. If you're with your husband, with your wife, you could actually pray. Kung may kaibigan kayo, you could actually pray together or you could pray alone. But then, in the next few minutes, meron po mga prayer slides na ifa-flash namin dito na pwede niyo pong tignan. And that can help you actually know what to pray for, especially in line with our country, with our church, uh, in our community, and of course, our family. Okay? C-A-S-T. And then after, after 20 minutes, babalik po ako dito. After 25 minutes, babalik po ako and I will close us in prayer and that's when we will have prayer leaders here in front to pray for your specific prayer concerns. Brothers and sisters, may you enjoy your time in prayer. Let's all pray together.